Hello everyone. Today we will talk about one more important topic of thorax that is azygous vein. Now first of all the features of azygous vein. It actually drains from the thoracic wall and the upper lumbar region and one more thing is that it is unpaired. Now first of all where is the azygous vein? This is the azygous vein in this diagram. This portion is the azygous vein. Now it is considered as very important channel between superior vena cava and inferior vena cava because it directly connects these two both vena cavas. So this is the azygous vein. Now what it occupies? It mainly occupies the thoracic wall and the upper posterior abdominal wall. Over here in this diagram you can see this is the azygous vein. And over here two main things is also there that is this is the hemizygous vein and this is the accessory hemizygous vein. We will talk about this later because these are the tributaries of azygous vein. So it occupies mainly two things thoracic wall and upper posterior abdominal wall. Now it connects very main three systems of the body that is hepatic portal system, systemic system that are known as the caval system and the vertebral venous system. So it connects all this this three very main important system of the body. Now what is hepatic portal system? In this the hepatic portal vein of liver drains the deoxygenated blood of the body. In systemic circulation or systemic system or the caval system the deoxygenated blood is drained by the pulmonary artery from the heart into the lungs or from the right, right ventricle to the lungs. And in the vertebral venous system the there is a vertebral vein which passes through the vertebral column and it drains the blood from the uh, deep back muscles of the body. Now how the azygous vein is formed? It is mainly formed by three main veins that is right subcostal, right ascending lumbar and the lumbar azygous. We we'll talk about all these three veins in detail. Right subcostal vein. First of all in this diagram this, let's locate the veins. This is the azygous vein connecting SVC and IVC. This one is the right subcostal vein. This one. And this is the right ascending lumbar vein. And third one lumbar azygous. This, this one over here. This is the lumbar azygous which is connected to IVC over here. This one. Okay. Now the right subcostal vein now it actually accompanies the corresponding artery okay means it accompanies its subcostal artery now the right ascending lumbar vein this one right ascending lumbar vein now it is formed by the vertical anastomos that connects the lumbar veins now the lumbar azygous vein this one now this vein is actually regarded as the abdominal part of the azygous vein and it is located right to the lumbar vertebra means here will be lumbar vertebra so it is present right to the lumbar vertebra and its lower end communicates with the inferior vena cava this one now the course the course of the azygous vein now first locate this is the ivc this is the superior vena cava the branch of superior vena cava I told you before also. Uh, this is the left brachiocephalic, right brachiocephalic. This is the uh, left subclavian, left internal jugular, left uh, right subclavian and right internal jugular vein. Now the course. It enters the thorax by passing through the aortic opening and ascends up, up to the T4 that means thoracic number four vertebra with arches at the root of the right lung and joins to the superior vena cava at the posterior side before it pierces the pericardium. Now the relations of this for relation just refer this to diagram so it will be easier for you. Now in the anterior portion there will be esophagus okay this is the azygous vein this one this is the azygous vein. So anterior there will be esophagus, posteriorly there will be two things, one artery that is the right posterior intercostal artery and lower 8 thoracic vertebras means totally we have 12 thoracic vertebras 
that is from T1 to T12. So lower eight, that means T5 to T12 will be in the posterior relation of azygous vein. Now in the right side, there will be right lung and pleura and the greater splanchnic now and in the left side and in the left side there will be two parts upper part and lower part of azygous vein in the upper part we will be having three things vagus now esophagus and trachea okay so you can remember my mnemonics vot v o t vagus now esophagus and trachea in the lower part we have two things thoracic duct and aorta now tributaries of azygous vein now first of all let me tell you that these tributaries are actually 11 in number in this side on the right side 11 in number total from 1 to 11 okay and these all tributaries are called as only on the right side are known as the posterior intercostal veins okay as you can see this is the first vein okay with first posterior intercostal vein but as you can see this second third and fourth are merged with each other united with each other so they form one particular vein known as the right superior intercostal vein and rest 5 to 11 are again called as the posterior intercostal vein now just come on the left side over here i told you before there are two main big veins that is the accessory hemiazygous vein at the upper border of thoracic 8th vertebra and the hemiazygous vein at the lower border of thoracic 8th vertebra now the rest are pericardial, esophageal or med and the mediastinal vein and the right bronchial vein near its terminal and somewhat here. Now this was all about the azygous vein. Hope you understood it well. Just refer the diagrams first and go through the video then. Thank you so much.